Rocky King Detective, starring Roscoe Carnes as Rocky King, chief of homicide of a metropolitan police force in an exciting fight against crime. Brought to you by Ivory Flakes, the mild, fast-dissolving flakes that beautify hands in the dishpan, and Florets, the new chlorophyll candy mints and chewing gum that make your breath kissing sweet. thing you brought home in a year. I can tell the time without even looking at it. Yeah, all you have to do is count. Well, I can do that all right, even in Spanish. Uno, duo, tres, cuatro, cuatro, cinco, seis. Siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Now, that's enough Spanish for the evening, Mabel. Go on, read your paper. I brought one home, especially for you. Is that to keep me from talking to you while you read yours? Yeah, you're correct. <gasps> oh, is Dayton Merrill going to be executed already? It seems it was only a couple of months ago they arrested him. I know, I'm reading it right now. It's one of the shortest trials on record. I just hope we're right, that's all. Well, you don't make many mistakes. No, but one's enough where a man's life is concerned. How do you like that? Hmm? Just take a look on page six and you'll see what a crooked world we're living yeah, in. Yeah, is there some more about Merrill? No, just robbers working right out in the open. Look at that ad in the middle of the page. Well. There's a dress I paid $25 for a week ago and now it's selling for $13.95. Well, they've got a right to do that. Not to me, they haven't. I'll take my business somewhere else. Ha! Huh. There added a third pair of pants to that suit I bought for Junior at the same time. Oh, oh, they only gave you a couple, huh? Is that all? Well, that's all right, Mabel. What's, what's a pair of pants between friends? Hello, Inspector King. Inspector, I hate to trouble you, but I'd like to know how you feel about Dayton Merrill being electrocuted. He dies at 12 o'clock tonight. Yeah, who is this? I can't tell you, and for a very good reason. But if you knew Merrill wasn't guilty, and I'm sure it's too late to do anything about it, you wouldn't feel very well, would you? Well, I don't think it's any of your business how I feel, but I'll tell you this. Dayton Merrill is going to chair on the evidence of one of my men. I didn't happen to be on the case, but I'm sure he had a fair trial. But a fast one, wasn't it? That's why I'm calling you. Merrill did not murder Dr. Keller. I did. Too bad an innocent man is going to the chair. Good evening, and uh, think it over, Inspector. Think it over. Hello. Hello. Who, who is it, dear? I don't know. We get more wrong numbers around here. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We do, Mabel. Spike King's office, Sergeant Lane speaking. Yeah, Lane, listen. Coming right in. What for, Inspector? There's nothing doing down here. Yes, there's plenty doing. Dig up that file on the Dayton Merrill murder. Dayton Merrill? Well, the guy's going to be electrocuted. I know that. I know that. Just do what I tell you. And get a hold of Lieutenant Rainey. He was on the case. Now, we've got to move fast on this so we haven't any time. Don't ask any more questions. But do you think the man is innocent? I don't know, Mabel, but I'm going to give him every break. Oh, wouldn't it be terrible if he was? Will you be gone long? I can't be long. Gone longer than 12 o'clock. It'll all be over, one way or the other. Goodbye, dear. Atlantic, it's 9.32 now. I guess we're dead. You better call off that date. I'll line up the girls for tomorrow night. Okay. Well, did you get a hold of Lieutenant Rainey? No, I didn't, sir. I spoke to his wife, though. He's been out hunting for the last couple of days. Had a couple of days off. That's so. All right. We'll have to go without him. Is this the Dayton uh, Merrill murder file? Yes, it is, sir. What's it all about? Well, somebody called me just a few minutes ago, and they said that they killed Dr. Keller. Oh, those are cranks, sir. They always call off the last Yeah, I know, I know. But I was reading about the case right at the time. I was worried, too. I don't mind telling you, Lane. Now, that's no reflection on Lieutenant Rainey. He's oh, a good sure. cop, and he knows his business. So maybe I'm not looking for a loopholes in this thing, just some reassurance that he's right. 
Well, sir, I kind of made a breakdown of the whole case file there. I'll read it to you. All right, all right. Go ahead. Now, let's see. Uh, Dr. Keller was a psychiatrist, keeper of complexes with the Mink and Martini set. Yeah. Merrill's wife was young, beautiful, patient Dr. Keller's. Date Merrill was a jealous husband. He thought his wife and Keller were having a romance. Uh -huh. Well, he warns the doctor to stop seeing her, but the doctor does All right, get to the murder. Go on. Sure. Uh, Merrill goes to Keller's office at night. The office is part of the doctor's house, but it has a separate street entrance. Yeah, what time was that? That was, uh, 7.30. So who established the time? The maid. Uh, Keller was alone in the office at the time. His nurse had gone for the night. All right, go on. Let's see here. The maid said she heard loud quarreling, listened through the door, heard Dr. Keller call Merrill by name. Then she went to another part of the house, came back 20 minutes later to remind the doctor of an appointment and found him on the floor dead. Yeah, what about the gun? It was a 25 caliber, sir, a silencer. Uh, the maid didn't hear any noise. And later on, it was found uh, buried in Merrill's flower bed. He denied it was his, of course. Well, did he admit that he was in the office when Dr. Keller was denied? Dr. Keller was killed? Well, let's see here. Uh, he lied about it at first, then confessed when Lieutenant Rainey told him that the maid had seen him there. I see. Inspector King, homicide. It is I again, Inspector. I'm sure you'll recognize my voice. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Glad to hear from you. Get on that phone in the other room, see if you can trace his call. Gotcha. What do you want? <laughs> Stalling, eh? Huh? No, I cannot give you enough time to trace the call, Inspector. I figured you would be reviewing the evidence against Merrill by now, but he is innocent and has only two hours and 15 minutes to live. Wayne? Yes, sir. You know something? We're up against a smart cookie. He knew we were going to trace that call. Well, what do you have to say, sir? What do you have to say? Who? You mean this yeah, thing? Yeah, it's a crackpot. Yeah. Well, maybe it's a crackpot, but I can't take any chances. What time is it? It's uh, 9.47. All right. We've got to move fast on this. Make every step count. Listen, um, what about uh, Keller's office? Oh, it's still running, Inspector. A doctor friend of his took over his practice. Yeah, what's the address? It's uh, 37 Cherry Street. All right, bring that file with you. That's where we're going. You better call the district attorney and tell him what we're trying to do. Okay. Reception room out here, Inspector. Evidently, the consultation office is back here. Yeah, this is it. Uh... All right, switch that thing over here. Let's find the light switch, will you? Well, what about the nurse he had uh, working for him? Well, it doesn't work for her anymore, Inspector. She's working for another doctor. I have her name here and her phone number in the file if you want it. All right, we'll call her before we leave, Lane. Let's have her stand by. These look like uh, patients' case histories. You know something, Lane? Merrill didn't kill him. The real killer could have waited out there in the dark somewhere until Merrill had gone and sneaked in there and shot him, disappeared before the maid found him. What about the gun? Well, the real killer reads in the paper the next day that uh, Merrill was arrested for murder. So he ducks the gun in Merrill's flower garden. That's where Lieutenant Rainey found it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Tell anybody we're coming here? No, sir. Yes? I keep pretty good track of you, don't I, Inspector? Yeah, you sure do. It's our friend. Oh. I figured your next step would be Keller's office, but you're wasting time. I destroyed the only clue there that could lead you to me the night I murdered Keller. You don't say. Dayton Merrill now dies in two hours and nine minutes. Well, he said Dayton Merrill dies in two hours and nine minutes. A little wrong there. It's less than that. We only stay on a phone long enough so we could trace him. Yeah, but well, what did the guy have to say, Inspector? That he had destroyed the only clue that might lead us to him the night he was here when he killed um, Dr. Keller. Wait just a minute. This man have been, may have been a psycho patient of Keller's. Yeah. Well, if he was, he'd have a case history back here. His name would be in it, wouldn't it? Sure. I'm sure the new doctor... Didn't get rid of the old records. Well, maybe that's what the guy destroyed, sir. All right, get a hold of that nurse. She can help us more than anybody else. All right. Her name is Ann Brewer. Phone's Granite 3114. Tell her to grab a cab and get out here. Okay. And don't scare her to death or we'll have to go and get her. <laughs> don't worry about that, sir. It's ringing. Hello? Is Miss Brewer there, please? Oh. Uh, how long ago did she leave, do you know? 
Well, where'd she go? The Beverly Theater? All right, thank you very, very much. Bye. You know where the Beverly Theater is? You bet I do, sir. It's five minutes from here. All right, then. Get on the phone and call the manager. Tell him to page her in the theater and talk to her in the manager's office. I'll up to the sir. Um, sit down, Miss Brewer. I'm sorry to take you away from the show. Thanks very much for the use of your office. We won't keep it very long. Now, uh, uh, Miss uh, Brewer, you would be familiar with uh, Dr. Keller's um, case histories, wouldn't you? Yes, with all those in the active file. Then if one of them was missing, would you know about it? Yes, I think so, Inspector. Beverly Theater manager speaking. Is Inspector King there? Oh, just a minute. For you, Inspector. For me. This can only be one person. So you knew my next step would be to find Miss Brewer, huh? You found out where she was just like I did. Yes, of course. I called her home, too. But you're wasting Dayton Merrill's precious time because the missing case history you're looking for was closed before Miss Brewer worked for Dr. Keller. She wouldn't know anything about it. How long did you work for the doctor? Just three weeks before he was murdered. All right, then, Lane, we're talking to the wrong nurse. We want the one that was there before. We want to talk no. to her before, Miss Brewer. can't, Inspector. She was killed in an accident. What? Well, you're doing great. I think so. Yeah, see you next trip. All right, you can go back to the show, Miss Brewer. Would you leave us, please? We want to do a little talking. All right. Okay, what will we do next, sir? Well, let's get in touch. We'll go to the district attorney and see if we get a stay of execution. Although I haven't got one solid thing to hang it on. You think our friend will know where you're going next? Well, undoubtedly. But I don't think you'll call there because you'll figure that the district attorney will turn us down. And he figures that we'll quit because there isn't enough time. Mm. But I'll tell you what he will do. He'll call my house and tell me what a sap I've been making of myself. And that's the call that we'll lay for. Well, or I put a tracer on my phone right now. You want me to call the DA, too, sir? Yeah, yeah, sure. Tell him to stand by in case something... Now, wait a minute. Now, wait, wait just a minute. Let me think. We've still got a chance to find out who this man is. By looking at the old records in the, in the doctor's office, the ledger, the account thing. All these business papers seem to be there. Mm -hmm. Now, if he was a patient, he must have a case history. So we'll go back a couple of months and match that case history against the... The, the, the record book, the, yeah. the, the, the case the right All right, all right, let's get over there fast. I'll tell Gehagen to put a trace on my phone from there. I think he knows we came here again, do you? J Janitor Speedy, who you want, please? For goodness sake, Marty, don't strangle to death. What are you doing, sipping an ice cream soda? Oh, it's you. How'd you know where I was? Mr. Gahagan told me. He's been here fiddling with the telephone. Said you wanted a tracer put on it. That's right, and you off of it, so don't use it anymore tonight. I'll be home in a little while. Well, haven't you got enough telephones in the police department without tying up my only friends? She can hang up just like that other fella. All right, let's go ahead. Where were we? Who was the last one? Chapman? Chatham. 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 All right. Next one is Farnsworth. Far yeah, Farnsworth, check. Gearhart. Oh, yeah, yeah, G. G? Yeah, G. H. Well, there's no Gearhart in her. Why? No Gearhart. <laughs> let's see those. How many have you got here? No oh, Gearhart. Wait a minute. Gearhart, huh? Yeah. Name rings a bell from somewhere. Mrs. Carl Gerhardt. Sure, sure. 
Professor Gearhart. Operator, give me police headquarters. Well, who are you going to call down there? Missing Persons Bureau. This is the best break we've ever had. Tell me more about this uh, Carl Gerhardt. Well, it was quite a deal a couple of months ago. The papers were full of it. He was a professor at Cranes University, and all of a sudden he disappears. Missing Persons Bureau found out that he'd been driving his wife crazy with mental persecution. And she left him on the advice of her psychiatrist. That was Keller. That's right, exactly. As I said once before, he disappeared, and nobody's seen him since. Do you think this guy could have killed the doctor because the doctor advised his wife to leave him? Well, I suppose so. He said he did, didn't he? It's undoubtedly too. Come on, ring that phone, Professor. We're laying for you. Got every cop in town looking for him. He must have changed his appearance some way. Take a direct call from him to, to nail him. Give me a cigarette. Sure. Don't smoke so much. Will you go to sleep? Well, I've I had enough people telling me what, what to do tonight. How do you think I can sleep? This nut might blow up the house instead of calling on the telephone. No, he won't at all. I got too many people outside. Then the clock. Still got an hour to go. Hello. Hello? Is Ruby there? Who? Ruby. Hey, wait a minute. Are you Ruby's husband? No, I'm Mabel's husband, and get off the phone. <laughs> Craziest things happen around here. Sit down, I'll make you some coffee. Hello. Inspector King? Oh, <laughs> it's you again. Well, of course, I had to call and claim my victory. Yes, I thought you would. But how can you be so at ease with an innocent man going to the chair because you couldn't catch the real killer? Listen, all I wanted to do was prove that you were a nut, and I've satisfied myself that you are, so now just go away and let me sleep. There's nothing on your mind but our innocent man going to the chair? All right, now let's see what we got. Yeah. The call came from Joe's Bar and Grill, 417 4th Street. All right. Radio patrol cars to cut off those streets. Cover right. that whole area. Get a hold of the DA and tell him to come to my office at once. Keep a line open to the warden. Where are we going, sir? Skid Row. Let's roll and let's pray. What huh? about the coffee? Never mind. We may be back, Mabel. Keep it warm. minutes ago. A man about 55 years old, gray hair, five feet nine. He sort of talks with a cultured accent. Oh, voice. Yeah, you mean the Duke? Yeah, he was in there at a drink about uh, five minutes ago and then he left. Know where he lives? Sure. Room and house next block. Same side of the street, uh, 1078. All right, he might not have gone home, Lane. Get a squad of men and a couple of the gin mills around here. I'll go to his room and make it snappy. We've only got a few minutes left. Hey, what's up around here, Doc? Nothing but price and say you drink your beer.
There's somebody here because I left the light on. You haven't got a chance, Gerhard. Better give yourself up. With you, Inspector King. Congratulations on getting here. I wonder how I slipped up. One day you'll find out you can't beat the law. I'm going to gamble, Inspector. In ten minutes, Merrill will die. Then the law can't touch me. Relax and watch my clock on the dresser. Nine minutes now, Inspector. Are you all right, sir? Sure. I'm all right, sir. Come on, get on your feet. Just shot him in the hand. Take care of his gun. Operator, give me police headquarters. Inspect King's office. Where you sipped up, Gerhard, was the fact that you were born. Hello. Hello. Hurry it up, will you, please? Hello. It's Inspector King. Listen, DA. You can get in touch with a warden, but just make it snappy. Hello, Mabel. Yes, case closed. I'm coming home. What, uh, dear? Oh, yes, 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 we got him. How does Dayton Merrill feel? Well, I guess he feels fine. Sure, wouldn't you? Yes, 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 we got in touch with the warden in plenty of time. That is, if you call four minutes, plenty of time. Well, that's what you're going to give me to get home, huh? <laughs> I see. We'll make some fresh coffee. Who cares? All right, sweetheart. Yes, dear. I'll be right there. Wonderful girl, that Mabel. Original music composed and played by Jack Ward. Tune in again next week for another exciting adventure of Rocky King Detective, starring Roscoe Carnes as Rocky King. Thank you.